Welcome friends to a review of the 2017 Bentley Continental GT Coupe. A special thank you to Bentley of High Point, North Carolina for allowing me to review this automobile. This is the oldest Bentley dealership in the country and this dealership is able to ship nationwide. So if you like this vehicle, then consider reaching out. It's priced at about $93,000 and the vehicle has a little over 38,000 miles on the odometer. So I will have this dealership and Chris Rivas's information and phone number in the description box below. But let's get started here. The 2017 Continental. I absolutely love the exterior styling of this generation. In fact, a lot of media tends to portray the silhouette of this generation Continental as a sign of luxury, prestige, etc. And I have to say, after all of these years, this vehicle it continues to have a royal, regal look about it. But comment below, let me know your thoughts. And the model I'm checking out here, it's the base V8 with 500 horsepower and 487 pounds feet of torque. There was the S model on top which had 520 horsepower and 502 pounds-feet of torque. And new for 2017 was the Super Sports model with 700 horsepower and 750 pounds-feet of torque. That is pretty epic, but this model, this is all you really need. Even these vehicles, they started at about $200,000 back in 2017 before any options. And this quote-unquote base Continental GT, it can do zero to 60 in about 4.6 seconds and it weighs a little over 5,000 pounds. With that established, let's get this out on the road and see how it does. I have to say right off the bat, compared to the new Continentals, this previous generation, it doesn't really hide the mass from you. You genuinely feel like you're operating a heavy curb weight automobile and I love it. That's the sensation that I kind of expected from this brand. And don't get me wrong, I like the way all of the new Bentleys drive. They feel light on their toes and they hide the mass from you. And that's a fine sensation as well. They feel very effortless to operate around town, but I like this hefty, sturdy Bentley feel and I sort of expected this vehicle to feel this way, and I'm glad that it does. The car is hyper smooth. I mean, I love the eight speed automatic transmission. Around town, it shifts seamlessly, and you don't even notice the gear shifts taking place. The ride quality over some of these bumps, that's also excellent. We still have a serene, isolated cabin, but in a moment I will be turning on to some of these back roads so we can check out the handling. The brakes have pretty decent stopping power. It's simply a progressive brake pedal and you have to get in on it a little bit more, but I'm satisfied with the stopping power here. All right, set off here. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is also easy to place out on the road. engine it effortlessly surges off and there's no drama with it it kicks down perfectly and smoothly and we can also put it in the sport s mode and that makes the transmission a bit more aggressive yeah power and speed that's not going to be remotely an issue with this vehicle you will be satisfied And the paddle shifters, I mean, that's interesting. I'm not a big fan of the way they are shaped. <laughs> I wish they were a bit longer. But they get the job done, although the paddle shifters, they are a bit more lethargic to react, but it's okay. If you're driving on a mountain road and you wanna manually shift the gears, the paddles will get the job done. But yeah, after all of these years, I mean, this is a seven to eight year old car at this point, but it still feels fresh, refined, smooth, no issues. Ride quality is simply sublime. You kind of know the textures of the road that you're driving over, but the impacts are absorbed wonderfully. And I would say if you swapped out these tires to a new set of 
Continentals. I feel like the ride quality and the smoothness would be even better than what I'm experiencing here. In fact, I really wish Bentley would utilize Continental as a OEM tire, similar to Rolls-Royce. I just put the dampers in its sportiest setting. And despite that, the ride quality, it doesn't really stiffen up that much more. But you do notice the handling getting a tad bit tighter. So that's impressive. I mean, despite the heft, the vehicle manages its body weight perfectly and it never crashes over the bump. This is definitely some masterful suspension tuning here. Yeah, it really corners neutral and flat. You just have a ton of confidence in this car. And of course you do get the all wheel drive as standard here. So it's truly a all weather, all purpose vehicle. A great daily driver for the price. With the new Continentals, I like the way the engine is pumped into the cabin. You really get that throaty exhaust and that engine sound entering into the cabin here it's a bit more subdued and subtle but you can tell that this is a good sounding engine for sure i just wish you can hear just a bit more of it but overall not bad right now i actually put the dampers in its absolute most comfort setting and the handling doesn't seem to be sacrificed at all in fact the car still remains a bit taut so not a drastic difference between these various damper modes. The car never feels like it's absolutely floating over the road. The vehicle rolls around on the road with authority and you really feel this car digging into the tarmac. A sensation that I really appreciate. But does this car feel special? I would say in many ways, yes. I think a lot of people are gonna like just how sturdy this car feels. because the new Continentals and many of the new Bentleys, they went for the more effortless approach. Again, I'm not saying this is like big or cumbersome or difficult to maneuver around town. I'm just saying this car is exuding a sensation that most people would expect from this brand. It's just gonna depend on who you are. Some people are gonna love the way the new Bentleys feel, such as I do, and the way that Bentley has tuned the engine to sound in the new Bentleys as well. That's also fantastic. Of course, this costs significantly less money. A lot of depreciation has occurred here. So you're getting a pretty good deal on a prestigious daily driver. But the car is doing everything right. It feels fresh. It feels great to drive. I like the steering feel, the ride quality, the way the engine surges off. Although it doesn't completely pin you into the back of your seat, it is no doubt a quick car. And it certainly feels like a vehicle that will do zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds. So with that established, let's go ahead and let's talk about this interior space now. All right, let's quickly talk about this interior space. I wanna get inside because it's quite noisy out. Just wanna show you a quick look from the outside. I love the Bentley quilted stitching. The door card still looks amazing after all these years. Classic. I will say there are a few subtle flaws with this particular model. This bit of like leather, I guess, peeled off, but it's a small thing. Just thought I would mention it though. Full transparency. But the seat itself looks pretty good. Despite this being real leather, the uh, creasing and the wrinkling, it's not crazy by any means. Pretty subtle with 38,000 miles on it. Seats are super comfortable. You have this uh, extension which comes out to deliver you the seat belt. Always nice to see. But yeah, I just love the stitching, the leather work. That's also fine with uh, these Bentley vehicles. It just has way more character inside than a lot of the Rolls Royce products. Their interiors, although it's nice, it just feels a bit more generic in the way that they do their stitching and their leather and the in general layout of the cabin. Whereas with Bentley, it feels more like an event to step inside. Now, this is the previous generation model. 
So it's not as elegant as the latest new Bentleys, but still nice. We have this smaller screen here. The, the main thing that I love about the new Bentleys is that screen which flips in three different sides, if you will. It'll show you some gauges or a plain wood veneer or the screen itself. Here we just have this stationary screen with the CD player. It's taken a while for the infotainment to boot up. That's something to note. We also have here the base audio system. So we don't have the optional name. The name audio back in 2017, that was like an almost an $8,000 option, just so you know. This base audio, it's an eight speaker unit. It sounds okay. It's not amazing or mind blowing by any means, but it does get the job done. There you go, 40 PSI on the tires. And the buttons in the cabin, they are plastic. And surprisingly, these buttons, they're designed to have a bit of play in it. I don't know if you can notice or hear that, but all the buttons are like that and everything here works perfectly. And this is a certified pre-owned car, so you do get like a one year warranty with Bentley, but you can pay like 10 or 11 grand to extend that warranty for an additional two years, so three years of warranty coverage if you want. There you go, you have the classic elegant Bentley gauges, quarter tank of fuel. These vehicles that are rated to get 15 in the city and 25 out on the highway, that's pretty good for a car of this weight and this power. And these are your paddle shifters here. Not a big fan of them, but they do work. A bit lethargic to react to your inputs, but it's okay. I just wish that it would come down more. It feels like the paddle shifters are half finished. I wish it would extend down, but oh well. You don't really buy a car like this to play with the paddles. It responds perfectly in the drive and in the sport modes. So I'm satisfied with that and I love this gear shifter with the big B on it. <laughs> That's how you press it to uh, put it into the gear that you want. And we have here a basic backup camera, no 360 or anything like that. You have a place to put your phone. I do like the chrome parking brake feels nice and hefty and sturdy. The steering wheel, I also like to grip onto this. No crazy wear here, except for some of the stitching, but that's okay, not a big deal. Yeah, steering wheel looks good. Overall though, this cabin, really sturdy. Very solid cabin space. When you press up against things, it's not all creaky and crunchy in here. And we do have a interior space completely slathered in leather, including the headliner. And this headlining material recently got replaced, so that's brand new. Yeah, looks good in here. You have a subtle amount of wear right here. That's the only thing. But other than that, interior is looking pretty sharp and it feels good and it feels pretty fresh. The wood veneer, that's all in great condition. Subtle scratches here in the high traffic areas, but really not too bad. Yeah, it's held up extremely well. You have this weird <laughs> kind of center console here, but oh well, that's a bit of storage. Got two cup holders here. This is where you access your damper setting and your heated and cooled seats, and all of this functions perfectly. The glove box space, that's pretty good size right there classic brightling clock in the middle all the vents they feel nice to play with AC blowing perfectly no issues by the way this is your Bentley key fob here you have a physical key to Put inside in case of emergency but of course this is a push button start automobile and the buttons does have a bit of wear on it on the lock and the unlock buttons but overall key is rather nice i do like the knurling on the sides 
yeah, there you go. And we do have rear seats, of course, but it's not that practical for adults to sit back there. You could fit some children, but not super comfortable for adults. But regardless though, you can use that as additional shelf space and the trunk is a good size. And we do have a spare tire in the trunk as well. So with that established, let's go ahead and let's conclude this review now. Concluding thoughts on the 2017 Bentley Continental GT. As you can see, I'm a big fan of the way this vehicle drives and the way that it looks. And it seems like a lot of other people were taking notice of this car when I was driving it around. It does garner a lot of attention. People know what this vehicle is. It's a classic. And it's personally one of my most favorite Bentley designs out there. And this black on black Continental, it looks sleek. I also like the wheels this particular model has. It's simple yet elegant. Again, leave your thoughts below in the comments. But I was really shocked by just how smooth the drivetrain was. No issues with the transmission. It never felt jerky. In fact, it was smooth during city drives and during more aggressive driving as well. Sure, the paddle shifters felt a bit lethargic, but that's not really the point of these cars. The paddles are certainly usable. They'll get the job done, but just leaving it in the auto or in the S mode, that's the best way to enjoy this car. Really quiet as well. These Bentleys, they come with extremely thick double pane glass and you can tell during the driving segment, this is a truly isolated cabin. The ride quality is also sublime. The adaptive dampers don't really make a drastic difference. Although in its sportiest setting, you do notice the chassis is a bit more taut and it handles the corners just a tad bit better. But overall, the dampers, they don't provide you with night and day difference. Even over the larger bumps, this vehicle it does isolate you from the bumps but if it's a truly sharp bump you will hear it but once again you won't necessarily feel it inside so that's great compared to the new continentals the ride quality is pretty similar but you do notice that this has a bit more heft when you drive it around it's subtle but you do feel like the older continental feels a bit more substantial and the newer one it's lighter on its toes the steering is a bit more effortless. Again, it's a subtlety that you'll notice if you drive the cars back to back. Keep in mind the new Continentals, they are about 300 pounds lighter than what I'm testing here. Just an interesting fact that I thought I would throw in there. But regarding the interior space, that's aged really well. You have the highest quality leather slathered everywhere and it's not overly wrinkled. In fact, the cabin is sturdy and solid. I did notice a subtle sound or if you want to call it a rattle coming from the front dash area when you go over certain bumps it could be something else but i just thought i would mention it other than that there's a bit of wear in subtle areas but really for something of this age and with a little over 38,000 miles not bad at all this thing has held up extremely well the bentley stitching is beautiful it gives the interior some true character especially over a lot of other rival luxury cars the trunk is a good size and we even have a spare tire as well. I just wish you could fold down the rear seats. That would make these cars a bit more practical, but oh well, not a big deal. At least you have the rear seats to use them as additional shelf space, if you will. Overall, great car. It's something that I would personally want to consider in the used car market. And keep in mind, at this Bentley dealership, this Continental GT, it is certified pre-owned, so it does come with one year of warranty, but you can pay about 10 to 11 grand more to extend that CPO warranty. And if you want to buy this particular model, it is located at Bentley of High Point, North Carolina, the oldest Bentley dealership in the United States. 
they are able to ship nationwide. And I will have Chris Rivas and his information on the screen as well as in the description box below. Chris Rivas also has a luxury car rental business in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. So if you frequent the area often, consider reaching out to Chris Rivas to rent one of his exotic vehicles. Right now, he just has an Instagram page. That's where you can contact him regarding that. So I'll have that link below as well. But if you found value with this content, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you again for watching. Take care and goodbye.